Hey guys, what's up? Bit Size Tutorials here, and it's been a long time since my last video, um, which did a little bit better than I had expected it to get to. Um, it's it got to like over a thousand views on it uh, for the GLFW tutorial. Um, so I just figured I should probably do a little bit extra. Um, that was a little while ago. I wasn't as well versed in C and C++ as I am now. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to uh, do something a little bit better. So I'm going to try to do like a game tutorial from C++. Uh, yeah, so I'm using Atom as my... <laughs> Atom. I'm using Atom as my editor. Um, I'm on a Mac, but that shouldn't really matter too much. Um, I will be using a tool that I created, and I'll link it in the description. It's pretty bad, but it works for what I need. So it just helps me create some make files that'll just get this process going a little bit easier. So I'll just call this tutorial. And I won't do anything else with that. Just leave it. Actually, let's just do that. Um, give me one second. Okay, so I should have uh, this thing right here. Um, yeah, so I do. I'll I'll have Git so that you guys can look at the source code uh, someplace else. But for now. Uh, this should keep track of everything. All right, so we're gonna start off with the main thing here, and usually people do these headers from what I've seen, anyways. So the standard uh, I/O and standard uh, library, and uh, the standard I/O allows the C out thing, but since I'm a C junkie, ah, since I'm a C junkie, I don't really like that. I still use printf, or no, excuse me. IO stream is what people use for the C out thing, but I don't do that. So I use the standard C libraries over here. So we'll just hello world that. Yep, and then we'll return zero just to make sure that it works. And it's tutorial. All right, cool. I'm going to come over to my make file. You can uh, copy this if you'd like. This will also be in the source code, so you can just uh, copy this if you want. This just sets up some things that makes it a little bit easier uh, for me to get along with my process that I do. I'm going to have to manually delete that one. But we're gonna get going with GLFW, and we're gonna actually be applying it um, in in here, kind of like my last video. But this will be in C plus plus. We'll have an actual class for it. So what did we do? We did we did window in the last video. Um, we'll do display in this one. So um, yeah, let's get going with that. Um, yeah, I just wanna make sure. Oh, okay, there's a couple things here. Um, if you're on Mac, you're gonna wanna use the OpenGL framework um, on Windows and Linux. I'm pretty sure there's just an include that you'd have to do, but you just put those like, so you could, I don't know, how, where, where do you put it? It's like your, your user uh, local bin, or no, local include, there you go. That's where you put the headers on Linux and I don't really know anything about Windows. Uh, C flags, GFW three, config, libs, GFW three. That should be okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna do our GLFW three, not whatever those numbers are. I'm not looking at my keyboard because there's a microphone in the way, so I apologize. Let's get that going. We won't need the standard library, I don't think. 
So one thing that GLFW does is it, is it includes the OpenGL headers, and we don't want that. We want to have full control. Sometimes that's nice, but not today. We're not using shaders or anything like that because I'm too lazy to learn how that works. So we're going to do this. So, all right. I don't remember exactly what I did in the last video, but here's how we're going to do it. So we're going to have a pointer to the GLFW window. And we're just going to call it window because we're fancy like that. And publicly we'll have the display constructor, which will take a width, a height, and a title. And our destructor will delete the window. Yeah. And we're going to have a start for now. But I don't know how long we'll have that. So we'll just copy this over here. And then we need to make sure that we're doing everything the way C++ wants us to. <laughs> So let's let's do that boilerplate code that we uh, used to have to do, and let's just what did I call it? Was it uppercase? Okay, tutorial. So the idea is that we'll be able to do this. We'll do that. Our game. We should be able to start it from here. Yeah, and we'll clear we'll clear the display to a color too, just so it looks a little nicer and be kind of like that first tutorial. This is kind of like the first tutorial 2.0, uh, C++ edition. So, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of the same things. So if GLFW init is false, then we're going to say that we couldn't initialize. You left W and we'll exit. That's why we need the standard library because we need to exit. Uh, that works. So uh, the window is going to be create window. And so the first argument is the width. Second argument is the height. The third argument is the title. And then I think those are flags for other things. One of them is like what video monitor to use or something like that. Um, right now we're not going to care about that. If you're on a single display like I am right now, then um, you can just, it'll, it'll just show up on the screen uh, the way we want it to. I think it on Mac it centers at least. It might not center on other operating systems. Uh, but later on in a different video we can add just the normal centering. Um, so if the window, if this returns a null pointer, so if we try to create a window and that doesn't work, then we need to terminate, that's not how you spell that, uh, GLFW, because we've initialized it up here. We need to say that we couldn't create a window. Okay, I spelled all that right, I think. And we'll exit again. And the reason we're doing exit one is because anything that's not zero is usually like an error. Um, I don't think people use that too much anymore, but you know, whatever, we'll just stick with it. And then we'll make the OpenGL context current. So we'll say the OpenGL context is for this window. And then we'll set up some OpenGL things. And let's remember we included that here. Um, also, we forgot to do that. And while we're at it, while we're down here, we'll just destroy window this window. So that will call the GLFW function to destroy. Actually, we can terminate. I keep spelling that wrong. We can terminate here as well. Um, yeah, because once this goes out of scope, it will delete. I don't remember it, if the yeah this is heap allocation. I think if we were to make it a pointer. It'd be stack. 
but right now that doesn't matter. This will never go out of scope, so we don't really need to worry. Because start is an infinite loop until the game is over, basically, is how we're going to have that go. But we'll get to that in just a second. Um, this code uh, is OpenGL, like, setup code. This doesn't really matter right now, but we're just going to get out of the way. So the way OpenGL uh, renders things is through matrices, which is the plural of matrix. So we need to set up the projection matrix. And the way we do that is we load the identity matrix, which I might throw up a picture on the screen now. Uh, which means nothing to you uh, if you haven't done anything like this before. Uh, but that could maybe be explained later on. I don't fully understand it either, but I just know that that's an identity matrix. Um, next, we're going since we're doing a 2D game, since I'm lazy, I think, uh, we're going to do an orthographic view. And the way that sets up is... Uh, what is it? Zero width, height, zero, negative one, one. So... I what yeah I do it so that um, like for this window this would be zero zero this would be um, nineteen twenty zero excuse me this would be ten eighty or zero ten eighty and then this would be nineteen twenty ten eighty so we keep the origin up in the top left corner is how this works um, that's what these do that sets the origin in the top right corner and or the top sorry top left corner um f if you flipped height and zero right here then it would be in the bottom left corner which is where origins normally are but when i started game programming the origin was up in the top left corner so i've just stuck with it this is the near plane this is the far plane everything will be rendered at zero which is smack dab in between these two numbers um so that works out pretty well we'll just see everything basically um, and then that's all we need to do for the projection matrix. So the next thing we do is we set it up for other things to be rendered. So we set it up for the model view. We load the identity matrix. We're just getting this all out of the way before we draw any meshes, which we'll get to eventually. I'm not sure when. Um, okay. So then that's all good. Uh, one thing I forgot. Before we create the window, we want to make it, we want we don't want it to be resizable. So what we do is we call a window hint. Resizable, false like that. And so then when we create the window, it won't be allowed to be resized, which is convenient in an orthographic view, the way we're setting this up. Uh, so I believe this is about it uh, for the initialize code right there. Um, so all we have to do now is actually start it up. And we're not going to do any of those loops yet. We'll get to that later. And I'll talk about function pointers, and that'll be fun. For now, just if the window... So, if the window should close, or should not close, really, is what that means. So, if the window is still open, then we will swap the buffers, which I believe I said in the last video something about... I said something about it, but I didn't explain it. Uh, it's just it's double buffering if you want to look that up on Wikipedia or something I don't have the I can't off the top of my head tell you exactly what that is without uh, stumbling over my words and I would not like to do that um, this just basically makes sure that it, it renders this just renders everything that we want um, GLFW pull events just checks for like keyboard input mouse input things like that and this is running in an infinite loop until we press the X button, in which case um, this function exits, we return here, and then it cleans up all of this garbage um, because then it would be out of scope and then it deletes and calls the destructor. And that's cool. So hopefully I didn't make any spelling errors. And there we go, spelling errors. Um, well, one thing we need to do is we need to include display which we we do there um, does that fix it well let's clean our project and then try it again nope all right something is up here I 
No. That should be libs. That should be C flags. <laughs> Silly me. It's called C flags. Let's try this again. There we go. All right. Now it should work. There we are. So we have our game. It is not resizable. It is 1280 by 720. And that's beautiful. Uh, let's actually, let's change the clear color real quick before we, uh, before we end this up. How? Oh, that's a lot longer than I would have thought. Okay. So let's, let's do that. Um, just real quick color, uh, zero. Let's, let's make it, uh, let's make it a green. Is clear color, I don't remember. Actually, we want that to be one, too. And we want to clear the color buffer bit. There we are. And green. Huzzah! We have a window, and hopefully less time than the first video, and hopefully, uh, that makes sense. I probably rushed through that a little bit, but I hope I was able to um, make sense there. I'm going to um, uh, video one, create a window. I hope that does what I want it to. Yay. Okay. Nice. All right. Um, awesome. Did I do the license too? I didn't do that. I'll fix that later. Okay. So thank you for watching. I hope that made sense. Um, hopefully I continue to do this. Maybe I'll find motivation to do it. Who knows? But yes, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.